Welcome to another video tutorial from 2DGameArtGuru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create a tree of life as a one curve design ready to be exported to SVG for cutting. So it has to be one shape. I want to have nice spirals. Affinity Designer does not have a spiral tool. That makes the spirals the first challenge in this design. To create this, I will mainly be using circles, the node tool, tapered strokes and compound groups. For the first attempt at the spiral, I'll be using the pen tool. I want a slightly thinner stroke though, that is too much. I create a spiral shape with straight lines. It looks something like that. I try to align my nodes vertically and horizontally. Some of them are bent, so I straighten them and then go in and smooth all the curves. It's starting to look somewhat like a spiral. Seeing I'm going to use them for the branches, I want a pressure curve assigned to them. I add that and as I worked from the inside out, I need to use the reverse curve to get the thinner part inside. Once I work on the nodes, set the distances and the angles, it becomes a little smoother. I can't really say I'm happy with the result. I could put more time into it. For now, let's just put this aside as the first test. The second approach will use circles. I create a set of increasingly smaller circles. I use the transform panel to give them even sizes and mainly increase them at an even rate. When you use the power duplicate, it scales up by percentage and not the actual amount in millimeters or pixels that you use. I convert all of them to curves and select all the nodes in the center. I use the break curve to separate the circle into two halves. I select only the top halves and move them over. The snapping makes it easy to adjust them properly. I now need to combine those segments again. The closed curve does not do the trick, it closes the half circle. What I want instead is the join curves. I select the two shapes that are next to each other, connect the two nodes by selecting those and use the join curve. This process potentially gives me two spirals. I just join the nodes for one. I increase the stroke width and add the pressure curve that I used for the previous test. When you reuse pressure curves, the save profile button comes in handy. It does look a little off tilt. I used the skew to correct that. I could now go in and move note by note and change the angles a little bit. There is a faster way. I turn on the transform mode and select a whole cluster and scale it. That way they stay in proportion and I just scale the parts that I want scaled and move them. It gives me a decent looking spiral. I take this one as the template for my spirals and get started on the tree of life itself. Giving it a frame first, I use a circle, reset the pressure curve and start from there. I use a thick width for the stroke that I can expand later. Create a rectangle with a fill and no stroke and an ellipse that I convert to curves and modify to get the connection to my frame.
And then I go in with the pen tool and create my branch. The branch is gonna reuse the pressure curve I created for the spiral. I make sure that the branch touches the circle. When you create for cutout, make sure there are connections for all parts so you don't end up with elements falling out of the design because they have been cut completely and are not connected to the rest of the design. It also makes it a lot more stable when you have multiple connections with enough width. As you can see, I duplicate and adjust the branches, trying to make it look slightly different while still keeping some sort of balance. I don't want a perfect symmetrical tree. I want something that looks a little bit more organic. It is usually faster to work with the duplicate than create from scratch. You might also notice that I'm not creating an identical copy of the tree I created in Inkscape. The process was too different to copy it. I take my template spiral and place it inside the empty spaces I have for the tree, trying to adjust it so that the lines match with the bigger branches. I did not change into a superhero and develop flesh-like speeds. I did speed up this video as it's just the same process again and again. I duplicate the spiral, rotate it, adjust it and slowly fill the space, selecting a whole bunch of spirals and duplicating those speeds up the process. I try to place the elements in a way that they connect parts with the frame or spirals with other spirals. That way the whole design becomes more sturdy. Don't do what I do. If you might have noticed, the file is still called Untitled. I never saved the design and I'm quite far into it. Save your design early, start with a file that has a name. It's a lot easier to recover if the program should crash. Seeing the design has reached a certain complexity, it helps to work with layers to organize your design. I copy all my spirals, all the branches into a new layer. I then move on to the leaves. A circle converted to curves and altered slightly will make a perfect leaf. In case I'm not happy, I make the leaf a symbol. That way all the leaves I'll place in this design can be quickly modified. I place the leaf in its own layer and start copying. Make sure you copy the symbol and not the symbol's content. Otherwise you have more of the teardrop shapes inside your symbol rather than more symbols on the screen. You want to create more symbols. I do the same thing again. I scale, rotate, I change the pivot point of the leaf to be at the center bottom of it and fill the area in between the spirals. Again, trying to make some connections wherever it makes sense to make the design sturdier. I try to remember to save often and increase the number in the file name going from version 1 to version 2 to 3, 4, 5 and 6. I think with this one I ended up with version 8 in the end. I zoom out quite a bit to get a look at the bigger picture and see where things are misplaced, where things are still missing. 
The green color made it easier for me to see the placements of my leaves. In the end, they will be black. So I change one of the curves inside the symbol to black and immediately all my leaves are black. It's one of the nice advantages of working with symbols. I'm quite happy with the distribution of my leaves. Not so happy with the base of the tree. I'm going to add some circles to make it a little less even. And I quite like the white parts in the original Inkscape version. So I'm going to add some elements that will be cut out to make the base a little less solid. I create a new layer for the last element, the birds that are going to be in the tree. I use a leaf as the space shape for the bird. It makes a good body, head and wing. I add a circle for the eye and duplicate the wing to make tail feathers as well as an additional shape to separate the body and the wing making sure that shape does not cut the bird into two parts. After adding two legs, I quickly tried the design on different poses and it seems to work okay and is easy enough to change. I combine everything into a compound group, pressing the Alt key while clicking on the Boolean head. Now I just have to change the eye and the part of the leaf from add to subtract in order to be cut out of the compound shape. Now I have this compound, I can place it, duplicate it, adjust it, seeing all the parts that make up the bird are still fully editable. With the birds in place, I'm making a little bit more room for them. Make sure when you alter the leaves now that you select the symbol and not the content. Otherwise, you change the position of all leaves in all symbols. Or worst case scenario, you delete all leaves with one click. I alter some of the spirals as well where they are too close to the birds. I save this version and create a new version before expanding the strokes of the branches. This is a quite irreversible action. Once I expand the strokes, the lines become curves and I have a lot more nodes and going back from a curve to a line is near impossible. I also expand the ring and make it a curve rather than a circle with a stroke. 
I want to avoid having any strokes in order to work with Boolean operations. I select the white parts in the base of the tree and combine them, making them a compound group with Alt plus Boolean add. Then I add the tree to the ring. Again, doing the same thing, working with compounds, combining the elements, combining all the spirals and the branches into another compound. Before combining that compound with the main tree compound, I do the same thing with the birds. They are compounds. I select them all and make them a compound combined of compounds and then combine that compound with the main tree. With the leaves, they are symbols now. Symbols can be turned into normal shapes by ungrouping them. They're considered a group. So by ungrouping them, I can make a compound, combine that with the main compound, deleting the initial trial spirals. And now I have just one shape, which is my one compound. By turning it into a curve, I can show you that it is now just one editable curve with a lot of nodes, but it is one curve and can be easily used as a cut file. So that is the Tree of Life done in Affinity Designer. I still have an editable version thanks to the compounds. I can go in, make alterations and turn it into a single curve by clicking on the Convert to Curves. Having created a similar design in two different tools, Inkscape and Affinity Designer, which one do I like better? It's hard to say. The fun part was the spiral graph in Inkscape. The tapered strokes were a lot more manageable in Inkscape because I could do it on the curves themselves. Affinity Designer did shine on the stability side. I recorded this in one go without problems. The compound groups are an essential part for doing something like that because it keeps your design fully editable while making it possible to export as a single curve to SVG or EPS. Ideally, you would have all the good parts in one tool. Certainly, that is not the case. So working with several tools at the same time seems to be the best option to me making the most of inkscape and affinity designer side by side seeing it's easy to copy and paste content from one to the other or export parts to svg and work them in inkscape this concludes the tree of life video if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel leave a like turn on the notification button and i will see you again soon